comedian of the evening is uh, is probably the nicest person I've ever met. I'm, I'm serious. He's the nicest human being I have ever met, and he tells jokes, which is usually a hate-fueled, hate hate-fueled way to out your rage. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> On that note, uh, put your hands together for Mr. Jared Cullum. Thanks, everybody. Give it up for Josh. He's doing a good job. All right. You doing all right tonight? Yeah, I'm doing great today. I'll tell you why. I had a snack pack earlier. It was great. I learned that from my nephew. He's nine years old. And uh, I asked him how he was doing the other day. And he said, I'm doing great. I had two pieces of cake today. I think that's great. It's so simple, you know. Because I feel like my life is so filled with like self-loathing and sadness. I can't even leave the house in flip-flops. You know what I mean? Like, I can't even like... If I wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and I see any kind of shape happening here, especially here in this area, I will wear a jacket outside. I will wear a jacket in 100 degree weather in a swimming pool. They just try to play it off. I'm like, no, it's exercise. This is how the Marines do it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I know, I know you think I should talk to somebody, and I am. I, seeing a therapist, and I know it's not really funny in itself, and I hope something funny comes from it, because that shit's really expensive. And, uh, but it's just a cycle of self-loathing, you know? It's just like, it starts with like a simple thought. I'm like, oh, it's hot outside. Maybe I should wear shorts today. And then 10 minutes later, I'm laying on the floor just thinking, life is a desperate vacuum of nothingness. And then after a short, seven hour bath <laughs> I think you know what I did have a delicious snack pack today <laughs> there is that there's just stuff I'm sad about you know what makes me sad what nobody's nobody's polite anymore like whatever happened to holding the door for people I was leaving a blockbuster the other day and it was one of those two door situations and I was leaving the first and I held the door for somebody and they went through and as I was turning around, I took it right to the head. I overreacted, I was like, hey, thanks a lot, you fucking dick. And then she got all mad. Like all of a sudden, I'm the asshole. I was like, look, little girl. I'm sorry for saying the fuck word. So I got this new thing I'm trying um, in my life. I thought I'd share with everyone here. Uh, I got this thing where I'm trying to be uh, more smug in my days. I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start trying that out every day. And I thought the first step, I thought this up last week, I was like, this would be a really good idea, is I'm gonna start using the word pedestrian as an adjective. <laughs> so let me give you an example. Uh, I see we have some wine over there. Yeah, I see we have some wine. Uh, uh, what kind of wine are you drinking? Oh, how pedestrian. <laughs> it's working, it's working, I find it's working. And then I thought, you know what would be even better? Is to be really smug and then really angry for no reason. Just angry about being smug. So this is what, I, I'm gonna try that now. This is what that looks like. Um, so what do you do for a living, sir? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Then that's how I could add to it. You know what I'm saying? Let me try it. Uh, so what do you, uh, sir, what do you do? So what do you do? Oh. So how many years or weeks at ECPI did that take? <laughs> Tell you what you can do. Why don't you head on down the road, go to the 7-Eleven, stand in line, see if you can get a fresh burned on the outside, still frozen on the inside, who gives a fuck taquito? That's racist. Because that's my thing. That's going to be my thing, is getting angry about it, 
but then taking way too much time to let the person know that I don't care <laughs> about, what, about what they're talking about. So it's smug, immediate angry, smugness, and then the newest thing is taking entirely too long to tell them uh, about how much I don't care about it. So this is my, this is my, uh, the next step is, um, uh, what do you do? Oh, well, I'll tell you what you can do. Is you can get in your car, go two hours east of here, go on down to Virginia Beach, meet yourself a little lady, find out she has a floral name, something like Petunia or Dandelion. Then you take her out on a fancy date, take her wine and diner, take her on a brisk walk on the beach, try to get her back to the hotel, but before you go there, go to Ben and Jerry's. Get yourself some Cherry Garcia, because nothing goes better with promiscuous activity than chunks of chocolate and cherry. Then take her back to the hotel for the night of the most passionate lovemaking you've ever experienced in your life, only to wake up and find your new starly, star-crossed lover Pissing, standing up. And then you don't know what to do, so you jump out of bed, run down the stairs with only a blanket around you, but before you leave the hotel, be sure to stop for your free, continental, hand-pressed, freshly baked, who gives a fuck waffle. <laughs> So there's a new advertising agency in my neighborhood, and they're called, <laughs> oh, advertising. There's a new housing development neighborhood. <laughs> there's a punchline before a joke. <laughs> oh. There's a new housing development uh, place in my neighborhood. This is true. And they're called Brookstone Homes, which is very exciting. Called Brookstone Homes, and this is their slogan. Gets me really pumped. It's Brookstone Homes. We build houses on lots. <laughs> at what advertising agency, see, at what advertising agency did someone go, you know what, I am tired of lying and making people fat and poor for shit they don't need. So fuck this. You know what? Papa John's Pizza. We make pizza. Coca-Cola. It's a drink for your face. <laughs> So, uh, oh yeah, so uh, <laughs> I was talking about advertising. See, I can never work in advertising because I, I'm entirely too truthful, if you know what I mean. But here's the problem with my truthfulness. It's never truthfulness that matters. Like, I never tell the truth of things that matter, like uh, the government sucks and there's oil everywhere. It's always like, like when a kid is like, hey, grass is green. But I do that in my adult life and it doesn't really work out. So I find myself regurgitating things that I shouldn't in horrible scenarios. Like sitting at a table with a real estate agent and my wife and being like, I don't really know if I'm ready to invest in a coffin. <laughs> doesn't bode well with wife. Like I'm afraid I'm gonna make a terrible dad because I'm afraid I'm gonna have kids and be somewhere and someone's gonna be like, oh hey, who are these? I'm gonna be like, oh, uh, this is my career as a writer. <laughs> and I call this one obligation. <laughs> hey, stop hitting your brother mistake. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for me, thank y'all. Jared Cullum. Does anybody else think that Jesse's girl grew up and became Stacy's mom? Just nope. me. Does anybody else know that those are both songs? Yeah. We've got to get a new mic soon. <laughs> Alright, fine then. Uh, does anybody else think the reason there's no more unicorns is those two on Noah's Ark were just fucking delicious? <laughs> cool. 
two people. All right, your next comment for the evening uh, has really been making the rounds in this city. He, uh, I believe he's fairly new here, but he's been coming out to all the shows. He's been promoting them. I believe there's some people here to see him specifically, which is fairly awesome. Let's put your hands together for Mr. Patrick McCarthy. Oh, I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing pretty good because I had a uh, sauna treatment today. Yes, do you know what a sauna is? Yeah, it's where they like trap you in heat so you can like sweat profusely, detox, and uh, rejuvenate. Yeah, my treatment was great. I uh, uh, sat in my car for 20 minutes. Uh, that's how I got my. A lot of people pay good money for it. I just make sure to roll up the windows. That's how I get my sauna treatment on. But have you ever been driving around? and you see a, like, a really nice, expensive car and the license plate is the model of the car. You know, like you see like a Dodge Viper, a license plate Viper. So I guess it's cool to be redundant. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to be cool. I want to do that with my car. One problem is, if I did it with my car, it wouldn't be redundant. It would take on a whole new meaning because I drive a Ford Probe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm driving down the street, people think I'm a pervert. It's like, <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> but actually, that car is out of commission. I'm not driving that car right now. I'm actually driving my grandmother's car, because I'm cool. But it's this huge Lincoln Town car. And, oh man, the manufacturers must not have had a lot of faith in this vehicle, because the odometer only has five digits. <laughs> yeah, I guess the manufacturer's like, wow, if you reach 100,000, <laughs> bravo. We did not anticipate that one. And then the check engine light's always on. Is it just me or is the check engine light a little vague? It's like, really, dashboard? You don't want to give me any more information? Do I need washer fluid or is a gasket about to burst in flames? Not important? Okay. All right, thanks, car. And then I was, I was walking to my car one day and uh, somebody locked themselves out. They locked themselves out and uh, they were trying to break in. I felt bad for them. And I thought one good thing about my car is I know I will never lock the keys of the car. Not because I won't forget them in there, but because the doors don't lock. So I mean, it's nice knowing that uh, I'll never have to, a problem getting to my car, but neither will anyone else. So that doesn't work out too well. And the steering on the car is real loose. So sometimes I gotta jerk the wheel to keep the car straight. And so like cars beside me, they'll see me swerve, like slam on their brakes. They get behind me and they're mad at first until they look down at my license plate and notice that I have a handicap plate because it's my grandmother's car, I guess they reason that, uh, oh, he must be special. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're thinking, but they give me a thumbs up and a smile as they pass, like, good work, buddy. <laughs> I don't know why they find that comforting, though. If I were them, I would be pissed that a mentally handicapped person is behind the wheel of a 4,000 pound vehicle. I remember back at driver's ed, I had my list of people that I prayed would fail. It's like, if he gets his license, I am moving to another country. That is not going to work. And, okay, if you want to give special people a license, that's fine. Can we at least restrict the vehicles they drive? You know, maybe not let them be behind a destructive Hummer. But would it be totally messed up to only let them drive a smart car? Yeah? No? Would that be rubbed in their face? Ah, fuck it. They don't understand irony. Come on. All right, I see if I've lost some people. I'll move on. So, anybody here work a part-time job? Yes, I worked at a pharmacy for years, and uh, I hated that job. I still remember the day that I quit, because that was the day that I put in my two weeks notice. Yeah, is it just me, or is two weeks notice just seem to take the punch out of quitting? Like, when you get fired, you gotta leave. You're gone. <laughs> What happens when everything that you hate about your job is like summed up in one key moment? What do you get to do? It's like, hey, Patrick, somebody shat all over the bathroom. We're gonna need you to clean it up. Yeah, you know what? I quit two weeks from today. Give me that mop. That is an employee's only bathroom. Somebody hates me. I hate wearing a name tag. Because I always forget that I'm wearing the name tag. So I always think the customer is like psychic or stalking me or something. It's like, eh, hey, thanks, Patrick. Do I know you? Have we met before? Then I remember the name tag and feel like a total idiot. But the good thing about the name tag is that's my identity. So if I were to change name tags, I'd change identities. 
Maybe this identity doesn't want to be as nice to the customer. Oh, do you need a bag for that one item, you lazy bitch? <laughs> oh, how dare you, I'm telling the manager on you. John. Oh yes, go tell the manager how much of an asshole John is. Hopefully John won't be working here anymore. <laughs> so I learned who the dumbest customers are working there. You know who the dumbest customers are? Old people. Because they come in the old buy two things. They buy laxatives, and they buy diapers. <laughs> Yeah, there's a dilemma in there. You buy laxatives to take a shit, and you buy diapers to catch that. If you don't buy either, you don't need either. You can get yourself out of that infinite loop and start saving some money. And old people love saving money. That's why they always buy in bulk. Which is the other dumb thing they do? You buy in bulk to stock up months in advance. They don't have a lot of time left. They need to be in the trial size section. Don't buy a keg of prune juice. Buy a travel size. Drink that seed you wake up in the morning. Then you can reassess your needs. Sorry if I'm a little bitter against old people. That was my whole customer base. And I, I had an old lady walk up to me once, holding a penny, and she's like, is this a dime or a penny? Try being nice. I was like, oh, that's a penny, ma'am. What? It, it's a penny. <laughs> I can't hear a scene. I have a driver's license. Now see, she thought she was telling her, that's funny because it's true joke. When really she was telling her, that's scary as shit because it's true joke. I gotta be on the road later with a woman who can't even see over the steering wheel. That's not cool with me. And then I learned about little kids. Learned about like 12, 13 year old boys. I know that when they come into the store, they're going to steal something. But they don't steal anything they need. They steal condoms. The fact that they're stealing them tells me that they don't need them. Because anybody who needs condoms is going to buy them. Because they want me and everyone else in the store to know that they need those condoms. And a guy cannot buy condoms without smart. It's just physical and possible. So, yeah, it's just that. Uh, I'm sorry, what? A bag? No. I'm good, thank you. But I love it when women buy condoms. Because there's a distinct difference between a man and a woman buying condoms. A man buys condoms out of hopes and dreams and aspirations. A woman buys condoms out of planning. It's like, that is on my to-do list tonight. Huh? Yeah, kind of. And I learned a lot about women. I learned um, very not useful information. Like before I worked there, I just thought a douche was someone I didn't like. Yeah, that was very confusing for me when I first started working there. I got women walking up to me asking me about douches, and I'm thinking, man, I just thought it was a myth that they liked assholes. I gotta start being more of a jerk. It didn't really work out to me for a while. Wow, I just went dyslexic there. But. <laughs> No, and uh, tampons. Yeah, most guys don't even want to think about the word tampons, but I don't get that luxury. It's like, oh, tampons. We look for a Tampax, Playtex, Kotex, they're free, care for your always. That's you light, regular, super. Oh, you have it flow, don't you? Aisle five. <laughs> I die a little every time I tell that joke. Because it's based in reality. But I also learned about uh, like, a weird thing when, like, blue-collar workers come walking in at, like, 11 a.m. on Monday or Tuesday, they buy, like, a six-pack of beer. And I'm thinking, what profession are they working that you could just drink alcohol in the middle of the day? And where do I get a job application? I am in the wrong profession. I need to put in my two weeks' notice immediately. But there was one good thing about working at a pharmacy, and that was working the night shift, because you get to close. And you'd always get like one or two stragglers and they're like shocked that the automatic doors open. It's just like. And as soon as they see me, they always say the same things like, hey, I, I just need one item. Just, just one thing. Now look, those doors are not soundproof at all. But I'm going to the other side going. <laughs> the mess of thing is that it works. Because they're on the other side going, but it just you can't hear me. Well, that's been my time. You guys have been great. Thank you. Patrick McCarthy. So, I told you guys that, that joke about the unicorns on Noah's Ark being delicious. Uh, I told that to a friend of mine, and he just looked at me and said, Dude, that's stupid. Everybody knows there was no such thing as Noah's Ark. There's no unicorns because they were all gay. <laughs> all right, uh, let's get ready to meet your next comedian. Uh, this is his third time on stage. 
which I don't believe. Like, he, he's awesome. I saw him at DM. Uh, he's one of my favorite new comedians. Uh, put your hands together for Andrew Qualley. How you guys doing? Woo! I don't like that. I got a new neighbor. His name's Tom. I said, Tom, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a truck driver. I drive an 18 wheeler. Like, That's cool. He said, it's outside. Do you want to come see it? I'm like, yeah, that'd be all right. So we went and looked at the truck. Sure enough, it's an 18 wheeler. And um, he said, hey, you want to get up in the cab? I'm like, yeah, I've never done that before. That'd be all right. So we get up in the cab. And I started looking around, and I started thinking. I said, hey, Tom, what's that thing right in front of you? I said, that's a steering wheel, dude. I said, oh, yeah, and you just got one of those, right? He said, yeah, just the one, one steering wheel. I'm like, okay, Tom, 18 plus 1 is 19. This is a 19-wheeler. <laughs> a friendship is based on trust, Tom. <laughs> you and I are off on the wrong foot. Let's try this again. What kind of truck do you drive, Tom? A 19-wheeler. Are you sure? You got any spares I should know about? <laughs> my friend asked me what my favorite animal is. I said, I don't know. I haven't tried them all. <laughs> I can vouch for chickens and cows. Giraffes and hippos? Maybe someday. I got another friend. He's a, he's a decent guy, but he's not very smart. And uh, he's kind of childish. The other day I said something he didn't like, and... Uh, he said that I was rubber, he was rubber, and I was glue. And whatever I said bounced off of him and stuck to me. I said, you have lost your adhesive quality. <laughs> he didn't get it. I said, you're no longer sticky. He still didn't get it. I said, quit sniffing me. <laughs> you're killing all your little rubber brain cells. I live in Oregon Hill. Any, any Oregon Hill Billies out there? Woo! Yeah, all right. Yeah, I live in Oregon Hill. Uh, the only thing that sucks about living in Oregon Hill is it's very close to downtown. And um, sometimes people get lost in my neighborhood and they want directions for free. <laughs> <laughs> this couple pulled up, uh, they stopped their car in the middle of the street right in front of my house. They saw me in the yard. The lady sticks her head out the window. She says, do you know how to get to the Landmark Theater? I said, yes, I do. <laughs> she said, uh, well, can you give us directions? I said, sure. Go to the end of the block. Take a left. Take a left on the Belvedere. Drive till you see the 7-Eleven. Go into the 7-Eleven parking lot. Go inside. Buy a pack of Marlboros. Come back here with the cigarettes. <laughs> and I will give you directions to the Landmark Theater. <laughs> Quid pro quo. When I was a kid, my dad used to hit me, but only when I asked for it. My dad was a good blackjack dealer. <laughs> my mom's a really nice lady. She's, uh, she's one of those people that give you the shirt off her back. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, she's more likely to give you the shirt off her back than she is to wear a bra. <laughs> I wish I had a guardian angel. Or I wish I believed in them. Uh, not so much because I want direction in my life, but you never know when you want to shoot some hoops. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but Halo. <laughs> when I was a kid, everybody thought I was weird. They still do, I know you guys do. I used to ride around on my bike, with one hand on the bike, the other hand on the handlebars of another bike. People would say, what are you doing? I'd say, I'm just out for a ride with my imaginary friend. And they say, why doesn't your imaginary friend just ride an imaginary bike? I said, because imaginary bikes have imaginary brakes. It's unsafe. <laughs> Everybody has fears, man. Some people are scared of the dark. Some people are scared of heights. Some people are scared of snakes. My greatest fear in life is that just one of the people that I've house it for has hidden cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I own my own business for a couple weeks. I opened a topless bar. The first week was great. We closed up on the second week because it rained. <laughs> That's a stupid joke, I know. 
damn, I should have opened this in Arizona, not Seattle. <laughs> you guys drinking tonight? Anybody drinking? All right. I don't like to drink. I smoke a little weed, though. I was, uh, I was at a bar the other night, and this guy, he, uh, he asked me why I wasn't drinking. I said, I'm not into it. And uh, he asked me if I smoked. I said, yeah, I smoke a little bit. And then he got all profound on me. He, uh, he said, yeah, man, I can feel you. I do both, but I understand where you're coming from. Because alcohol makes me act stupid, and marijuana makes me feel infinite. I said, what you just said is infinitely stupid. I wish you would just leave me alone, infinitely. Stupid. I like, um, I like fairy tales, man. I'm not into the Rapunzel story. I think it's bullshit. You guys know that story, right? She's, she, Rapunzel's a girl with really long hair, and she's locked up in a tower. This guy comes around, he's a prince, and he like falls in love with her immediately, and he keeps coming back, and every time he's like, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair so I can get up there. And eventually she says yes. And that's where the story falls apart, because she pulls him up by her hair. And this guy's been waiting for her the whole time, so we can assume that he's in the mood for loving. But she's not, because she just pulled a dude up 100 feet by her hair. <laughs> she's tired and sore. He's ready to get busy. She's ready for an Advil and a nap. The prince doesn't really pick up on it, you know? He's like, maybe next time when you're pulling up, you can like live more with your legs, you know? She's like, maybe next time you can just get a big ass ladder. <laughs> Go to ye old Home Depot. I'm a dog lover, man. And people like dogs? Yeah. That's a weird thing to ask people. A lot of people like dogs. My favorite dog is a dachshund. Because a dachshund is like a limousine for fleas. <laughs> hey Joe, where's this mutt taking us? I don't know, but we're going in style, my man. Our chihuahua riding days are over. I read a lot, so I go to a lot of bookstores. Some bookstores are cool, man, because you go up to the front of them, and right there in the, the front of the building, right outside the door, there'll be a rack of books, and there'll be a sign that says something like, these titles, 60% off. And that's what the sign says. But what the bookstore is saying is, take one, fuck it. <laughs> they say German is a language of love. Or, shit, I messed that up, man. They say French is a language of love, but I think German is a language of s &M. Everything in French sounds like, I love you. Everything in German sounds like a direct order you don't want to disobey. I was in high school, man, I went, I went to the prom, and uh, I'd been seeing this girl for a few weeks, and I really liked her. I asked her to go with me, and she said, yeah. But I messed up. Cause all my friends got their dates corsages for their wrists. And I got my date an air freshener. <laughs> Everybody said, why would you do something like that? I'm like, because I think they smell better and I'm pretty sure that they last longer. <laughs> Ironically, later on at the dance, she informed me that she was leaving with another guy. I was devastated. I asked her why. She said, because I think he smells better and I'm pretty sure that he lasts longer. <laughs> I, did, I went shopping with a girlfriend one time. I never did that again. She wanted to try on some jeans. So I went into a store. She goes in the dressing room with the jeans she wants. She comes back out. And she asked me that question. You guys know that question, right? Do these make my ass look fat? I said, no. I said, but go like this. And she did. And I said, did you hear that ripping sound? <laughs> These jeans are obviously of poor quality. Let's try the next size up and see if they're made any better. That's all I got tonight. That's all I've got tonight. Thanks a lot, guys. Keep it going for Andrew Pauly.